family. I am Monique and I am so happy to introduce this week's rock star and Bible study teacher. This month we will focus on the purpose of Jesus Christ, life, death, and resurrection. Come on, stand up with me and clap your hands for your rock children's Bible study teacher. Good evening boys and girls. I am Miss Carlotta, one of the rock stars at the Rock Children's Church. I'm so excited that you are here today to learn more about God's Word. Last week, you learned about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. As you know, many people followed Jesus everywhere he went, including the ones who didn't like him. They tried to find a way to get rid of him. This week's lesson is about the crucifixion. Jesus' death and burial. While watching this video, there are three things I'd like for you to look for. Number one, the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples was in celebration of what holiday? Number two, who did the disciples learn would betray Jesus? Number three, how did Judas signal to the guards which person was Jesus? Are you ready? Well, listen, look, and learn. Let's watch the video. It was the festival of Passover. Jesus and his 12 disciples had gathered in a room for their last supper together. Jesus knew it would be their final time to be together before he died. So he told his friends many important things. There was one very important message he had for them. One of the disciples would betray him. The one who betrays me will dip his food in the bowl at the same time I do, said Jesus. And just as he said that, Judas reached over and dipped his food in the bowl. With shock and anger, Judas looked at Jesus. The Son of God knew beforehand that Judas would betray him and deliver him over to the chief priests and religious leaders. Judas shoved away from the table and scrambled for the door in a rush. He didn't look back. He scurried away to do his evil deed. All the other disciples looked on in awe. They could not believe that one of their own was a traitor. Jesus understood that the hour was soon approaching that he would suffer and die for the sin of all mankind. He told the disciples to remember his death and to think of him often. He took the cup and bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and handed it to each of them. He told them to think of the wine as his blood and the bread as his body. The disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying. Peter, one of the disciples, said that he would never leave Jesus. But Jesus quickly told Peter that before that night was over, Peter would deny that he knew him three times. Meanwhile, with the chief priests, Judas carried out his evil deed. He agreed to hand Jesus over to the cruel leaders if they would pay him a lot of money. Of course, Judas knew it was wrong, but there was no turning back now. By now it was dark outside. Jesus and his disciples went to a garden. Jesus wanted to prepare for his death, so he fell to his knees, bowed his head, and poured out his heart to his heavenly Father. Oh God, he cried, I don't want to suffer, but I will do what you want me to. His prayer went on for hours. The disciples couldn't stay awake and fell asleep nearby. Jesus, however, couldn't sleep and stayed awake in prayer. When Jesus came to his disciples, he found them asleep. Even after he woke them and encouraged them to pray, they fell asleep again. The second time, Jesus woke them and told them that the time had come for him to be arrested. The disciples were confused and did not know what to expect. A group of armed guards rushed up to Jesus and his disciples. Judas was with them. Judas walked over and kissed Jesus on the cheek, a sign to the soldiers 
that Jesus was the one they should arrest. Peter wasn't about to let this happen. He was going to protect Jesus. He whipped out his own sword and slashed at the guards. In doing so, he chopped off the ear of one of the servants. Jesus rebuked Peter gently. Jesus knew that Peter meant well, but this was all part of God's plan. Jesus touched the man's ear and completely healed it. The guards were amazed. Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a robber? Jesus asked, looking up at his attackers. The guards knew that Jesus had been preaching and teaching in public places, and no one ever tried to arrest him there. This night was different. The disciples were afraid and ran away, but Peter followed Jesus at a distance. Jesus was led all the way from the Garden of Gethsemane through the Kidron Valley to the high priest. There he was interrogated. They were trying to find a reason to kill him. Of course, Jesus was honest and true. He simply told them what he had always declared. He was the Son of God. This enraged the leaders. They led him to another court to obtain permission to put him to death. Meanwhile, Peter stood outside in the courtyard around a fire with other bystanders. He wanted to see what happened. You're his disciple, aren't you? A servant girl suddenly asked him. No, I'm not, Peter swore and became angry. I don't even know him. Three times it happened that Peter was asked if he knew Jesus, and three times he lied. Then suddenly, the third time he lied, a rooster crowed three times, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. He ran away, feeling horrible, weeping bitterly. That night, after Jesus was arrested, Judas realized what he had done. He was so overcome with guilt, he didn't care about the money that he had earned. He ran to the priests and threw the coins on the floor. Then he ran out, tied a rope around his neck, and hung himself. That same night, Jesus was on trial before the Roman leader, Pilate. Even Pilate didn't want to kill Jesus. He hasn't done anything to deserve death, Pilate said, exasperated. The crowds, whipped into a frenzy by the leaders, just wanted to see some blood. Crucify him, they chanted with maddening anger. Pilate decided to give in. I'm going to give you what you want just to keep the peace. But I have nothing to do with this. I wash my hands of it. The cruel Roman soldiers were only too glad to oblige. Jesus was whipped mercilessly, leaving him bleeding and wounded. They mocked Jesus, hailing him as a king. Then they shoved a crown of thorns on his head. They spit at him, hit him, slapped him, and made cruel jokes. Jesus, silently suffering, did not retaliate. He was like a lamb being sacrificed. He was indeed the sacrifice, dying for the sins of the very people who tortured him. The time had come. Jesus would be nailed to a cross. He was forced to carry his own heavy cross until he fell from the pain and exhaustion. Jesus was so weak that a man named Simon of Cyrene ended up carrying his cross to the top of Golgotha. There, at the hill called Golgotha, which means Hill of the Skull, Jesus was crucified like a criminal. Hanging on the cross for all to see, two thieves hung beside him. This was no place for the Son of God. Jesus' hands and feet were nailed into the cross. The soldiers hoisted the cross into the air, and Pilate hung a sign above his head that read, Here hangs Jesus! the king of the Jews. The religious leaders were furious about this, but Pilate refused to remove the sign. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, the entire land was plunged into darkness, even though it was the middle of the day. Then, before Jesus died, he cried out with his last breath, It is finished! Jesus breathed no more. 
A low rumbling erupted from all around. In Jerusalem's holy temple, the mighty curtain that separated the holiest of holies was torn in half. Many knew that instant that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Before evening, right before the Sabbath started, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for Jesus' body. He prepared it for burial and placed Jesus' body in his own new tomb. He then rolled a large stone in front of the entrance. Guards were stationed outside the tomb to make sure that no one came to steal Jesus' body. The religious council knew Jesus said he would rise again. They wanted to prevent that. Jesus had to die to appease God's wrath toward sin. But this was not the end. Jesus would be resurrected after three days to defeat death and sin forever. Wasn't that video amazing? I know you're ready to answer the questions now. Question number one. The last meal Jesus had with his disciples was in celebration of what holiday? Do, 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 do. You ready? You got it? You're right. It was the Passover. Yay. This meal was also called the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and we call it Communion. We at the Fountain of Praise take our communion every first Sunday in the month. The communion represents the bread and the blood. The bread represents Jesus' body, and the juice represents his blood that was shed for us on the cross. Question number two. Who did the disciples learn would betray Jesus? Do, 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 do. Did you get it? Yes, it was Judas. He betrayed Jesus. Question number three. How did Judas signal to the guards who Jesus really was? Do, do, do. Did you get it? Well, he kissed Jesus on the cheek. The memory verse for this lesson is, in the ultimate act of love, Jesus died to save us from sin and death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Repeat after me. In the ultimate act of love, Jesus died to save us from sin and death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Through all that Jesus went through, remember, he did it because it was an act of love. Jesus died to save us from sin and death. As a result, we have the gift of salvation, or to make it shorter, we say, we are saved. Speaking of the word salvation and being saved, our next video explains. Are you ready? Take a look, listen, and learn. What's up, Bouncy? Hey, Dot. I see you're reading the Bible. The Bible? Yeah, you know, the big book that tells us about God, how he made everything, how much he loves us, how he wants us to live, and just how awesome he is. Well, I'm trying to read it, but there's some stuff in here that I just don't get. Like what? Well, this says that everyone sins, and I don't think that I've sinned. Do you know what sin means? You know, like being a robber or something. But I'm not a bad guy. Sin means disobeying God. Have you ever lied? Well, sometimes. What about sneaking around to get away with something your parents said not to do? Well, everyone does that. That's no big deal. That's sin. That's disobeying God. And yes, everyone has done it. But the Bible says that the punishment for sin is death. I thought God was a good guy. That doesn't seem too fair. God is the good guy. He's perfect and he's fair. So he has to punish sin. Well, can't I just be extra good for the rest of my life to make up for all the bad stuff I've done? 
Didn't you read the good news part of the Bible? No. What's the good news? Jesus. Jesus? God sent his son Jesus to earth to take your punishment for you. He is the only person who never sinned. Not even once? Nope. He was perfect, just like God. So when he died on the cross, he took the punishment for all the sin in the world. Jesus can erase your sin forever. Dying on a cross? Oh, I'm so confused. Okay, let me start over. God loves us. He wants to be our friend. But sin messes up our relationship with God. So God did something to get rid of sin. He let Jesus die in our place. The cross made a way for us to be friends with God. So what do you mean by cross? That's how Jesus died. People nailed his hands and feet to a big wooden cross and left him there until he died. A uh, dot, I'm just a kid. And that's gross and kind of scary, really. Well, that's how it happened. Because of the cross, we can be right with God. Whew, so I'm all good then? Well, you have to choose to live your life for Jesus now. A uh, dot? Yes, Bouncy. But I don't know how to do that. It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B, believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C, confess. Confess to others that Jesus is your boss and your best friend. This will keep your friendship with God strong. You know what, Dot? I want to do that. I want to make Jesus the leader of my life. You do? Well, you can pray with me right now and talk to God about it. You want to? Yeah, but I don't know what to say. If you want to make Jesus your leader, repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. I know that I have disobeyed you. I know that I've disobeyed you. I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to sin anymore. Thank you for taking the punishment for my sin. Thank you for taking the punishment for my sin. I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. Thank you for making me your friend. Thank you for making me your friend. Help me to live for you now. Help me to live for you now. I can pray this because of Jesus. I can pray this because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. After watching that video, can you believe how easy it is to become a part of Jesus' family? Now, for those of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Dear God, we can't thank you enough for sending Jesus to die for our sins. May we think of this forever and live for him each day. I admit, I believe, and I confess. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, welcome to God's family. You're a member for the rest of your life. Boys and girls, did you know that before Jesus hung his head and died, he made seven sayings. That's right, seven. And they can be found in each of the Gospels. I'd like for you to find two sayings, download them to the Rock Youth page, and have your parents to assist. Luke, chapter 23, John, chapter 19, Matthew chapter 27, Mark chapter 15, choose to and download. Oh, by the way, are you doing your Rock and Resurrection challenges? I sure hope so. This is day number three. Day number three of what we call 
the Holy Week or the Passion Week, leading up to Good Friday, which was horrific for Jesus, and a long night, leading also to his resurrection on Easter Sunday. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.